I received a package from Canada with goodies for the channel. Let me go down to the basement where I've got my overhead camera rig to take a look at what's inside. All right, and now on the workbench, I have a package from Thomas Armstrong, who sent me some goodies from our northerly neighbor. So I thought I would Do a little unboxing here. And all right. So what we have here are some open source projects. Now Thomas did tell me that I'd need to get some of the parts for these, which is fine. So, but he has sent me a an XT IDE which he did tell me there were some parts that I'd need to order, but it looks like most of the parts are there. Ah, he even programmed a 386 binary for me. Awesome. So I will I'll need to get some LS Logic chips and a resistor, couple resistor packs. But other than that, that is an XT IDE version 4 from Glitchworks, or at least the designs from Glitchworks. It's an open source project. So, awesome. And it is an ISA Super VGA from Sergey Kisilev. So this is the 8-bit ISA video card. It takes the Trident TVGA 9 thousand I chip so I, I will need to get one of those chips but other than that it looks like all the components are installed that are needed looks like I could upgrade the RAM if I wanted to but all the other components are installed I just need to get a video chip so very nice so that will be some soldering I will get to do and then this is this third item is a, I think it's just the PCB. Ah, it looks like there's a crystal on it. Oh, wow. Okay. Come on, anti-static bag. Give up the goodies. There we go. And this is a... See, is it marked on it? I don't remember the name of the project right offhand. I'll have to go look it up. But this is an open source project. I think you put this on an Arduino Mega. And it's used for reading and programming some older Flash technologies. So he said he was going to throw this in as a cool project. Could come in handy. I never know when I might need to read some of those type chips or program them. So until I look, remember what this is, I will. Well, that's all I can say about that. So, anyways, three, three open source projects that I can put to good use. So, thank you, Thomas Armstrong will be a great addition to some of my vintage computers. So anyways, now that I've opened this package, I will go upstairs and we'll look up exactly what this project is so that I can add on to this video.
but it is cold enough down in my basement that I am not going to do that down here. All right, so now that I'm back upstairs where it's warmer, I'll take another look at what I have and what I'll need to do to each item to get it running. So the first item was the XT IDE Revision 4 from Glitchworks, which, fun fact, they are actually located in Virginia, and they're actually about an hour away from me. Although I don't think they have a retail store, so they probably wouldn't appreciate me just showing up. But the XT IDE is everybody's favorite open source project for putting a compact flash card in XT class computers, although it will work in newer computers. Just it won't get the benefit of 16-bit IDE transfers, but it will work in them. And again, this card has the 386 ROM already programmed on it, which will be handy. I did remember that Tom told me that he would tack down all the ICs and other multi-pin components that were on the boards, so I will need to solder the rest of the pins to all the multi-pin components, as well as install the two LS573 chips and the two resistor nets that are not on the board. So I will, in a future stream where I'm doing soldering, I will, as soon as I get the parts, of course, I will plan on finishing this board so I can put it to use. And with the 386 ROM binary in it, and hopefully the greater configurability of the XT IDE as composed to the XTCF Lite, hopefully I will manage to be able to get it to work in the Emerson Elite SX386 so that I can go to a solid state storage, which potentially might be just as fast as the mechanical hard drive by means of it not being a mechanical storage medium. So that's pretty cool. Plus, I could always, if I need to put it in another computer, I can always program the correct ROM image on it, and I'm good to go. Then next, I have the... It's the, uh, yeah, ISA Super VGA from Sergey Kisilev. This is version 1.1 of the board. And the really cool thing about this is it uses the Trident TVGA 9000i, which is a pretty decent VGA chip. Has good compatibility with VGA as well as good backwards compatibility with CGA, EGA, Hercules, and MDA modes. So that will be handy for putting in an 8-bit computer. Tom programmed the version 4.01 ROM image for me. And again, the multi-pin components do need to be soldered, and I will need to order the Trident chip. Unfortunately, I failed to get that ordered before the Chinese New Year, so I decided that I would go ahead and wait until the 10th or so before I place the order because there's no point in me ordering now because it won't ship until after the 10th anyways. And besides, I might between now and then realize that I forgot to order something else. So instead, I will just wait until the 10th and that way, if I remember something between now and then, I only place one order. And I am going to go ahead and order two extra memory chips for this while I'm at it, because it'll be really nice to have 512K uh, video RAM. The memory chips don't cost that much. And in that case, I'll go ahead and max it out. But again, that'll be a really cool project. And we'll, I'll give this a try in the Emerson 8000 EC. I don't know, don't necessarily know that it'll work with the onboard video. But who knows? Maybe it has some tricks up its sleeve that the other video card I tried doesn't. Or maybe it will at least better 
cohabitate. So that's going to be a fun project. And then the last one that I couldn't remember what it was, it is the MCS48 Programmer Reader. This is a really neat project because it is a recreation of a programmer for several Intel microcontrollers that are used on older electronics. And this can also read and program. So if I'd ever need to reprogram one of those microcontrollers to repair an older computer, or maybe need to read a microcontroller to archive its code somewhere, or to help someone else repair theirs. It's a really neat project. It does go on an Arduino Mega. So I will have to get one of those as well as the only component that's on it is the crystal. So I'll have to order probably most of the parts. I might have some of these on hand because some of the components are common values. But I think this will be a really cool project. And I'll put this together in a future stream as well. Probably a Solder Sunday stream where we'll just put this together and maybe I might see if I can't find one of those microcontrollers so we can give it a try. But it'll be a, a cool project to put together. It might help with being able to get an older computer or other electronic device back up and running because I'll be able to read and program those microcontroller chips. So three really neat boards two of which I will probably be able to put to use sooner, but we'll also give that one a whirl because it seems like a really neat project and I never know when I might run into one of those microcontrollers. So overall, three great boards, open source projects. Those will be really cool to complete on future streams and also be able, I'll be able to put those to good use. So thanks once again, Thomas Armstrong, for sending these to me. Now, if you're out there and have something that you would like to send to support the channel, just reach out to me on social media. Let me know what you'd like to send. And if it's something I can put to use, then I will give you my address and let you send it off to me. And your items might be on a future episode of Channel Surprise, which is going to be the name of my unboxing series. So with that, thanks for joining me for this short unboxing video. And I look forward to some of the other surprises you might be sending to the channel. Have a good day. We'll see you next time. Thank you